Hi, my name is Simona and I am 3D supervisor at Mark Roberts Motion Control. In this simulate tutorial, I will show you how to export a camera movement in carts from Maya to then import into Flare and um, play from there. So let's import a ball break. And from the version 1.14 of simulate um, there is a save rig move save cards options that will allow you to export uh, a camera in Cartesian's value to then import into Flare. Um, the camera will be three a three nodes camera and to better understand what a three nodes camera means I will create a camera aim and up in Maya. So the thing that we'll notice is that the three nodes actually correspond to the position of the camera. Let's make this a bit smaller. That's it. And the aim. And the up vector, which will basically tweak the row of the camera. So the position of this vector will indicate to the camera the direction to row towards to. So three nodes camera position aim which will basically change the pan and the tilt of the camera and up which will change the row. I'll delete this. You won't need a three nodes camera in Maya in order to export a three nodes camera to Flare. All that you need is to have the rig mover node animated or constrained to a camera and Simulate will automatically convert the position and direction of the rig mover node in order to export correctly the values to Flare. So just for simplicity's sake, let's animate a one node camera. <coughs> Excuse me. Let's minus 90. Mock up a very quick animation on the, that will be the X axis. So, just an extra translation in time. Let's parent constraint the rig mover node to the camera. That's out of range at the moment, but that's fine. We will get the track closer to reach it better. And I want a top mount. 24 offset on the X axis and 15 centimeters offset. Oh, that's the wrong one. That would be the Y. <laughs> For the nodal offset. Um, I'd like to have the arm flipped. Okay, so it goes through the base. So what I need to do is to animate the base as well to accommodate for this camera movement. So um, Let's keep the track here, there, and then let's bring it back. And that looks all right. Um, so by default, if all selecting like the uh, save axis values workflow, if I would select it, the bot rig root node and then save rig move and save cards, I will call these cards frame by frame. Yeah, I want to overwrite. So Simulate would bake out or export a move frame by frame. So 
if I was to open now just to check what's gone into the move that I've saved I would notice that not only I have a frame by frame move with the cards index and the cards data but also track extend and angle the master axis and the slave axis so that I can if I want to import them as well later on in Flare. Right. The nice thing about Simulate is as well, if I was, for example, selecting the camera on top of the rig root node and the rig mover node, it would Simulate would automatically go through the graph editor or the animations that I have created in each node and export only the frames at those animations. So effectively kind of like decimating the data for us or just exporting the most important frames, which are the frames that we, I, keyframed. So let's do that. So I've got selected the root node, which is important because it tells here it tells simulate what rig I want to export to. And I've also selected the two nodes that I want simulate to check on the keyframes for uh, sparse export of the data. So save cut again. And this time I call it sparse frames SF and save. Let's check it out. Only two frames, 1001 and 1100. And that is because I've got two keyframes. This would be the truck hint, it's the animation that moves the truck. And this would be the camera animation on the x-axis. And they are both at frame 1001 and 1100. And that is the reason why I've just got two lines of data inside my exported move. Um, I'm just going to quickly show you what would happen if, for example, the camera was offset in time related to the animation of the base. So let's move these to 110 so that the camera is actually starting moving after the base, the rig base, and it's going to end moving before also so if I was looking at both the animation I would notice that my base starts at 1001 my camera starts at 1010 and so it finishes 10 10 1090 the camera and the base at 1100 so same rig rig mover node that is where my truck or base of the rig is animated and camera node and then export it again in cards. I'll overwrite my sparse frame. Let's check it out. So now as you can see I've got four lines and that is because the camera is actually keyframed at 1010 and 1090 whereas the base is keyframed at 101 and 1100. Right let's import these two moves in our flare and the first thing to do in order to have a good card that is basically very close to our export from Maya a good card move is to set up the lens properly so in the lens setup I will have to calibrate the offset properly or actually have it the same as our Maya or simulate settings and if you remember, if you remember in my settings, I have a minus 24 and a minus 15 that effectively translate into a 24 centimeters offset vertically and a 15 offset in Z horizontally. So I'll apply this and then exit. And in the CGI import window, I will select I will import the frame by frame move first. 
By default, the CGI import window has master axis on blank. I'll import it like that at the moment to show you what's the difference. Okay. And uh, as you can see, I've got all the frames here. Um, let's check out what the rig model view does. So the nodal offset looks the same. Here's the, here's the nodal offset of the lens. and So it's back 15 centimeters and it's below the tilt axis, 24. And uh, as you can see, I've got like the green keyframes, blue keyframes and red keyframes that's in relations to the node, the three camera node are the green is the up vector position and then the blue is the camera translation position and the red is the aim, the camera aim position in XYZ. So this is the movement but as you can see the base is not moving. The reason being is that I didn't import the positions while I was importing the whole move. So I'll delete the job and I'll create a new one and I'll import again. But this time under master axis, I will set file positions and import. Okay. So as you can see now under track, I've got a frame by frame value data of the track position. I can open the FBF and quickly check that the data is the same 50, 50, 4996, 4996, and so on. So let's see if in the rig view it looks like what we had in Maya. And yeah, that's pretty much the same movement. Obviously, this will be a quite difficult move to change then because we have from 1001 to 1100 frames and different position to tweak. So it, it's going to be challenging to then tweak if the director or the DOP is going to ask us to, you know, reframe or move. And um, one thing to say, though, is that looking through the right through the uh, graphic this is the closest that we will get to the animation in Maya. And the reason is there's it, the reason is that because we've baked out each frame, there is a one-to-one -one comparison. Actually, there is a one-to-one -one resemblance with the frame curve into Maya. Let's now import a new move. actually is the same move but this time what I'm going to import is the sparse frames one we know already the difference so I leave file positions on because I want the master axis to be imported as well okay and this time we're gonna have only four positions which is great if we want to if we want to then tweak that in flat rig model the lens nodal offset it's still the same 24 and 15. and the animation is same same but different i mean as you can notice there is a bit of a worm like walk happening on the angle right at the beginning so one thing that i want to repeat is now because we are basically leaving the interpolation to flare and flare doesn't use the same interpolation as Maya you would notice that the curves that are linking the two keyframes in the camera positions are effectively different than the curves that are linking the two keyframes in Maya. And that is because Maya uses a cubic interpolation as or and um, whereas Flare uses a whatever you choose or your setup flare to 
views, which in my case is um, in my case is splines. So you want to pay a particular attention to this, and you know you might need to tweak slightly the move when you import it, and that is because of the interpolation. But all in all, it would be very close. And it would be a good starting point for you to um, start and working on the move that you've previously in Maya. Um, for this tutorial is everything. And if you've got any questions, suggestions, or you just want to get in contact with us, just write at support at markroberts.com. Bye.